Hey, what's going on guys? So this reviewer today is going to be on the Team Daiwa TD Vibration 108. Now, um, I want to make a point of, uh, of explaining to you guys um, that there are basically two Daiwa hard bait lineups out there. You have the, the Team Daiwa version. This is the packaging of this lure here. Obviously, it has a little plastic piece, a little cover that goes over it. But this is the the the, the packaging from the Team Daiwa version, and then uh, and then you have the new standard stuff, and you guys have all seen that. It's just like a regular box that opens up. It's got a flap on it and everything like that. It's a reclosable box. Now, it, it seems to me that Daiwa doesn't make these lures anymore. I could be wrong. I'm still able to find them, but. Um, uh, it seems that they got away from this line of lures, this Team Daiwa line of lures. This this line of lures is a seemed to be more of a, a top tier line of lures. That their price points were like fourteen to seventeen dollars a piece, so they were right there in that Lucky Craft Jack All range um, of the higher tier Japanese style lures. Now the the newer ones like the Game Vibe. This is the new game vibe. This one's only like seven or eight bucks. Not saying that it's not a good lure, because I've actually caught fish on this lure. This is this is a this is a fine lure, but uh, they are different lures. Just for a point of fact that they are different lures, and um, and they don't behave the same, and and all that. So if you guys are able to come across any of the Team Daiwa stuff, this is not the same stuff as as uh, the new stuff that Daiwa seems to be putting out. Now uh, there were basically three sizes that they that they had when they had this lure, and Tackle Tour did a, a, a wonderful review on this about eight years ago uh, on their website. And uh, pretty much everything that they said, I mean, they, were, they had some insightful things on there, and then um, uh, their on the water stuff seemed to be exactly my experience with it as well. And I'll go into that here in a minute. But as far as the sizes are concerned, there were three different sizes, and then you have um, this is actually the biggest size that that we have here in front of us. So this one has a length of three and a quarter inches, has a weight of three quarters of an ounce, and it's a variable depth sinking lure. You can see that these two lures have different finishes on them. This one, this uh, table rock here, has more of like a, uh, a glossy finish on it. Kind of get our focus there. And then I think this one is the Red Craw, has a matte finish. And it actually has different, uh, it has holographic eyes, but they're not three-dimensional. They're like stickers on there. If we can get it to focus. There we go. So they're kind of just like a like a sticker that goes on there. This this one on here is a, is a three-dimensional holographic eye. This one's just a holographic sticker eye. So, and you can see the whole thing is just a matte and it has a different feel to it. It has more of a, of a grittier, rough texture to it. So, and I'm sure they did that on purpose because of the crawdad pattern that's on it so um, it's a fairly loud crankbait too uh, this is this has a bigger cavity in it so it's not it's not a fair comparison to, to show it up against the game vibe but um, so this one by the nature of this bait being a, a larger bait is going to be louder but and then here's your Excalibur XR50 And uh, go ahead and show you guys our comparison here so you guys get an idea of how large that lure really is. You guys can remember me saying uh, in the last review that I've been kind of uh, gearing my lipless crankbaits more towards these larger ones because uh, I have so many of the medium and small uh, lipless crankbaits now that um, uh, I like buying these these larger ones because of the fact that uh, I do have success on them when when I find the opportunities to throw them when they're really on that lipless crankbait bite and you and you don't want to uh, run through a whole bunch of rats you can kind of cut down on on the clones that are going to bite on you uh, on your lure if you go to something larger like this and uh, possibly catch something bigger so. Um, now, as far as the uh, finishes and stuff is concerned, you can see it does have a an etched pattern on it for the scales, raised gear, raised gill plate. It has a circle, a circle split ring on it, which that should have an oval split ring on it. But it's an older lure, so I mean, I, I don't know how available oval split rings were ten years ago, but it is what it is. So, and then uh, the hooks are definitely a premium style hook on there. It's a very thick wire hook. Um, I don't know what the brand of that hook is, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely a really nice hook. And there's two different sizes. You have a larger one, obviously, on the front there, 
and then you have that smaller one on the back. Um, as far as on the water performance is concerned, um, when I threw it out there, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary for casting performance. It just has a, a, a very average casting performance, uh, outstanding casting performance when measured up against other lures or other hard baits, but when measured up against uh, other lipless crankbaits, it's just kind of average. Um, but uh, as far as the vibration is concerned, it had the vibration for me left a little bit to be desired. There was still a little bit, it was, it almost seemed kind of like a slight vibration and, and the, the wiggle on it was, it, it's one of those lures that almost seems like it's kind of just floating in the water, almost like the, um, like the LVR from Lucky Craft, how it has that thin profile. So it doesn't, it doesn't have that really hard knocking vibe to it. It's just a real kind of light vibe or light rocking to it. Um, but it still does have some vibration. Uh, the thing that I like about this lure, and there's not a lot of lipless crankbaits out there that do this, and the, the ones that do it are the ones that I covet, or the ones that have a medium fall. Not a slow fall and not a fast fall, because most of them have a fast fall. And I don't want it to have a slow fall that I can't fish it quickly, because lipless crankbaits, I want to fish them fast. But if it has a medium fall, I could throw it up shallow and I could still rip it without getting caught in weeds and, and getting caught on rocks and this, that, and the other. So I really covet the ones that have a medium fall. And this one has a, a, a nice medium. It has a nose down fall. I didn't notice any discernible wobble to it. Uh, again, I was fishing with this, uh, this bait in some stained water, so I couldn't really tell. All of our water around here is pretty stained up right now. Um, with all the algae blooms that are happening right now, we've had a lot of sunshine. We're getting into the 90s and stuff like that. So um, kind of hard to find some really gin clear water these days. But um, just a, a really nice crankbait. You'll notice there on the nose, it has kind of like a dished out uh, convex area, convex area where it looks like a ball would fit. Um, they say on tackle tour that that was kind of like a stabilization spot. There was another bait. Well, it was the... It was the uh, best vibration that had that, and there, there's a, there's a few others that that have that dished out nose to it. This best vibration was the lure that I reviewed yesterday, but um, there's a couple other lures out there that that have that dished out nose to it. Um, I couldn't tell you if it actually works to help it keep it uh, stabilized, but uh, I'll tell you that it does like to be burned. But um, with that medium fall to it, that's kind of something that I like to exploit. Throw it up shallow, let it fall kind of just at that medium rate that it likes to, pop it up, and if, it, if I'm not get, getting any bites within the first few cranks of the, of the reel handle, then I'm bringing it all the way back. So uh, go ahead and show you guys my colors here. This color, like I already said, is red crawl. It's a matte finish. It's got black on, on the back, red on the shoulders there, and just kind of a, an orange, a bright, highlighter orange on the belly. See it says TD Vibration S. I'm sure the S stands for sinking. So TD obviously for Team Daiwa. There is Red Craw. And then the next one is called Table Rock Shad. Uh, just like all the other table rocks out there, you've got the purple on the back. The thing that I like about this bait is it's a very muted chartreuse. It almost looks like a washed out chartreuse. And I don't know if it was brighter than that because this lure is old. I mean, it's not, I mean, I may have bought it a year ago, but it's not a year old. I mean, it's probably at least five years old, maybe four years old. But the point is, is it, it could have got washed out from being on the shelf. I don't know, but um, I really do dig that 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 washed out chartreuse, kind of like the the Ike colors, the uh, Mike Iaconelli colors in the in the Rapala lineup. He has his own special colors that are all kind of just washed out, muted colors of their of their old version. Um, and that that chartreuse will be a, a, a very nice performer for me. So there is. Oh, this also has a, an orange throat there. So this is Table Rock Shad. All right, guys, so uh, there's my review of the Team Daiwa TD Vibration 108s. 
Um, if you guys get the opportunity to find them, uh, or, or at least get to buy one or two of them, I would definitely do it. I mean, it, they're fun to fish with, and uh, it's kind of nice to have a lure, um, especially for a guy like me that has a, a lot of different types of lures. It's kind of nice to have a lure that is uh, not as readily available as some of the other ones. I mean, uh, they're still available. You can find them on on like eBay and stuff. Uh, fairly easily, but uh, and you can probably find them in some of your local tackle stores and stuff still But it's kind of nice to have one that is not so readily available that you can't just go to uh, Tackle warehouse and buy it. There was a uh, that minnow one that I that I reviewed a couple years ago uh, Tackle warehouse didn't have it and now it's in their uh, their JDM marketplace uh, So if you go to their JDM and they're selling that lure that that I that I had. I, I picked it up on a clearance for like ten bucks. They're selling it for like twenty seven dollars. So um, definitely the Team Daiwa stuff seems to still have a, a, a cult following and a lust after it still. So if you guys like the video, please hit the like button down there in the lower left corner. I really appreciate that. And uh, stay tuned for the next review. I've got two more. I've got the LVR and I've got the LVRTO. They're both from Lucky Craft. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do them both in the same day. I don't know if I'm gonna do them tomorrow. Um, I got a couple things I got to do tomorrow. I'm either going to do it tomorrow or the next day, but I'm definitely going to get them out of the way this week and then I'm going to start it all over again next week and I'm going to try to bust out one review after the other again next week because uh, I'm going to be buying frogs here before the end of May for sure because uh, frog season is quickly approaching and I've got to get some frogs to review for you guys so we can see uh, what the latest and greatest frogs that are out there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.